Good morning, afternoon, evening or nighttime, wherever and whenever you may be watching. Today, I'm going to be talking about a fragrance that Stephen from Red Lessons made me buy. Okay, so full transparency, he didn't like hold a gun to my head, he didn't message me and be like, yo, you're buying this now, sucker, I'm paid by him, you need to buy it, none of that. He just talked a lot about this fragrance, he mentions it a lot, it doesn't get much hype outside of his channel from what I can see but he talks about it smelling very much like a mojito and if there's one thing you've got to know about me I love a mojito I think arguably it's the best invention in the world maybe better than the internet maybe better than the wheel who knows but yeah Stephen over at Red Lessons has talked about it before he thinks it is the most accurate mojito scent he's ever come across and it is Aqua Decima by the house Eau de Tali. So after hearing Stephen talk about the fragrance, I went on Eau de Tali's website to have a look at the fragrance. I don't think they say anywhere that they're going for a mojito vibe, but you know, different notes like petit grain, lemon, mint, it's evocative, same ingredients that you'd find in the classic cocktail. I don't always talk about the packaging and bottle design on my videos, but I thought this one stands out a little bit more than the rest. This one is the 100 mil box, and then you open it up. There's a, a pamphlet inside which explains a bit about the company and about the different fragrances, bit of a magic trick there. And then you've got the bottle inside, which is, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's quite a heavy duty glass. Yeah, I assume glass, um, that you can't see through. So that's something to bear in mind because I know some people want to know the level of juice they got left. But maybe if you hold the light up to it, you will see what's left inside. Top of the cap is very nice. It's a very heavy duty bottle. But yeah, that is presentation for Aquadesima. Lovely sprayer as well where you can control how much comes out. The fragrance does open up with a citrus blast of top notes, lemon, mandarin and mint leaves. The mint leaves are present, which is where at the opening is most reminiscent of a mojito cocktail. Lemon and mandarin, I think they combine wonderfully with those mint leaves. Arguably, if you was going for a mojito cocktail, which again, they haven't said they are, but you would have had the note of lime at top. I don't, the lemon is probably what I'm getting most and because of the lemon and the mint leaves combining, to me, it gives off a bit of like a, almost a sherbet vibe. I don't know if, if anyone's tried sherbet lemons, but it gives off that effervescent, fizzy kind of lemon, which I'm really a big fan of. Middle notes of this fragrance are petit grain and hedion, which I had to look up online what that is. It's kind of like a jasmine white floral, but with more added citrus. So it gives off a watery vibe, which also, you know, petit grain, as to my knowledge, gives off that watery citrus vibe as well. It does add to the summery, fresh, quality with this fragrance is. There's something I find a bit annoying when people say, oh, this is a great release for the summer, it's fresh, it's blasty, it, you know, it'll be, it'll really knock your socks off during summer, but a lot of the fragrances go off and have a creamy base, which to me, I just don't think that's really appropriate for summer. I find it a bit too sickly sweet. This isn't, this goes for that watery citrus vibe that I think works really well in hot hot heat. I have got the dry down of this fragrance. I sprayed it about four hours ago on my skin just to give an idea and I have worn it before. In the base of this one you've got white woods and vetiver. This fragrance in my opinion is heavy on the vetiver and it is because vetiver can come in a few different ways. It could come in like a smoky slightly herbally way. It can come in like a dry you know, herbaceous kind of thing, but also it can go in a soapy direction, such as Mugler Cologne, Castile by Penhaligans, other fragrances of that elk, Green Irish Tweed sometimes got a bit of a um, soapy vibe. This, to me, goes off in that soapy direction. This is arguably the longest part of the fragrance. I think the opening, as I said, is the most reminiscent of a cocktail. It's got that fizzy lemon going on, refreshing, but as the fragrance progresses, it does get soapy and clean. And I'm more than happy with that, because as I said, I class this as a fragrance which is really good for the summer, really good for that fresh cleanliness vibe. My only gripe with it is, A, it doesn't last all that long. It's not a powerhouse. Not that you really want a powerhouse for summer fragrances, and not that you expect it, you expect them to be a bit more fleeting, but my second biggest gripe is it's not exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting this fragrance to be super, super mojito. It was just gonna be pure through and through. 
and it is for the first half an hour it's quite reminiscent of it but then after that it just goes off in a soapy clean direction which is good keeps you fresh whatnot but it's not taking me to that mojito place that I wanted to go. And to summarize, do I think it's a good fragrance? Yeah, I think it's a good fragrance. I've never really smelled anything quite like it, especially because the mint leaves in the opening, but it's not what I was fully expecting. I think it'll be a good one for summer, don't get me wrong. I just wish the opening notes that first half an hour lasted a bit more throughout the fragrance. If you've tried this one, let me know. Steven, I know you love this one. I like it too, but perhaps not as big a fan as yourself. Let me know in the comments, anyone who's tried this one. Much appreciated. Peace.